Okay, so let's start grade 11. Hello, grade 11. Can you hear me, grade 11? Yes, ma'am. Ma yes, ma'am. Yes, ma ma so, welcome to week 4 in Earth and Light Science. To start with, let us start with a simple prayer to be led by Saraya. Saraya Godoy, please lead a prayer. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. Thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, thank you, Soraya. Uh, these are some virtual classroom rules. So uh, please take note of this, grade 11, be on time. So every month, everybody must enter the session 1 o'clock and we will start at 105. Next, act like you're at school. Sit in one spot during class. Keep yourself muted unless asked by the teacher. Next, turn on your video if possible. If not, okay lang as long as you will listen. Next, raise your hand if you want to talk or if you want to ask something. Next, listen. No eating during class. Have fun and do your best. And then do always enter to the class point for your answers in this session okay so to begin let us have this simple paragraph okay please read the Cairo Wala pa si Jairo. Okay, so let's have Frederick. Please read the paragraph, Frederick. Your mother... <coughs> Wait, ma'am. Tangina! <laughs> your mother is a good lantita wherein she surrounded, surrounded your house with a garden of full, beautiful flowering plants. A letter came which invited you to attend a party. You asked your mother... To lend you a money. For you to buy some, some buy a simple gift, sadly you came from your family. So there is no money given by your mother. And told you, just bring what we have. In this situation, what will you, what will be your gift to the celebrant? Okay, so hold on your phones and write what will be your gift to the celebrant in this kind of situation so everybody put your answer using the word cloud what will be your gift to the celebrant knowing that there is no money given by your mother and you want to go into that party what would you bring
Okay, what would you bring? Okay, so we can see more answers here. Okay, 30 seconds to put your answers, mga anak. We have 23 responses in, already in this word cloud. Okay, so these are the things that you will bring or you will give to the celebrant. So some answers, birthday card. So Frank had answered, he will give a birthday card since there is no money to buy a gift. Others are, oh, we have here, I will give the celebrant a plan. Myself, Tupperware, a bouquet of flowers, handkerchief, plants, flowers. Okay, so maybe one of the plants of my mother. So most of you answered you will going to give a uh, plants or a uh, flower. Definitely because in that situation, sabi jan, just bring what we have. And knowing that your mother is a good, good plantita, you came up with a decision to just bring a flower or a plant. So since you're going to give a plant or a flower, I want you to draw the flower that you will going to give into the birthday celebrant. So everybody, hold on your phones again. Draw the flower that you're going to give to the celebrant. You're given three minutes to draw the flower that you're going to give into the celebrant. Okay lang, Lara. You can just type your answer dito sa comment box, Lara. Pag uh, low yung internet connection natin. Draw the flower that you will give into the birthday celebrate. So what would it look like? Let me see your gift to the birthday celebrant. Okay, so we already have here a drawing of Lara.
A few things I can. Okay, time's up. So we have here 19 who submitted their output for this one. So let's choose Reka to describe the flower that he drawn. So Reka, what is this flower? Kindly describe the flower that you have drawn. Reka, what flower will you give to the celebrant? Describe it, Reka. Or just describe the flower that you draw. Reka? Rose, Kinsan, Vicente, Mama. Okay, so thank you, Reka. So very good, Reka. So according to Reka, he will give the birthday celebrant a rose and a San Vicente. So... This one is a rose and this one is San Vicente. So very good, everybody. So I can see full of flowers, full of different varieties that you have drawn. Dito sa slide drawing. So how is it related to our lesson for today? Flowers, flowers. How is it related from our lesson for today? So for today's objective, we have here... You, students, will be able to describe the different ways and how plants reproduce. And you're going to determine and define the parts of a flower. What are the parts of the flower? What are the parts of that flower that you have drawn kanina? So, let us start with the definition of reproduction. Uh, please read reproduction. Any volunteer who wants to read the reproduction? Okay, yes, Ross Mom. Wayne. Yes, Ross Wayne. Reproduction is the process by which an organism produces its own kind to ensure that its species lives on. Okay, thank you, Ross Wayne. So, in this reproduction, if organisms of certain kind do not reproduce, what do you think will happen? If there is no reproduction, what do you think will happen? Yes, Saraya? What do you think will happen if there is no reproduction? What may happen? Ex extinction, ma'am. Okay, very good, Saraya. There will be extinction. So, organisms will not exist anymore that's why reproduction is very important if organisms of certain kind do not reproduce their species will gradually diminish until they cease to exist so that is reproduction and for all we know we have two types of reproduction we have here the sexual and the asexual reproduction First is the sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction takes place when gametes unite to form a single cell. So when we say gametes, gametes is the male and female sex cells. And the single cell that is talking about here is the zygote, which will then form Organism. So the sexual reproduction is the production of new organisms by two individuals with different sexes. It involves two parents to produce offspring, male and female parents. 
related to how is it related to a flower how is sexual reproduction related to uh, please angel close your mic okay how is it related to flower Sexual reproduction is related to flower in the sense that in plants, flower is the reproductive organ of a plant. And take note that all flowers have male and female parts. So male and female parts. First is the carpel. This is the female part of a flower then we have here is stamen which is the male part of a flower the other name for carpel is the pistil in some books pistil is the name for the female part of a flower okay so we have here carpel female part stamen is the male part of a flower aside from that we also have here sterile. So when we say sterile, sterile do not directly take part in the reproduction but greatly aid the reproduction process. So those are the three main parts of a flower. Again, what are the main parts of a flower? What are the main parts of a flower? We have three. Carpel, stamen, sterilma. Okay, very good. So we have carpel, stamen, and sterile. So again, carpel is the female part, stamen is the male part, and sterile aids the reproduction process of a plant. So very good. Next. Let's determine the different parts of a flower under the sterile. So, under the sterile, we have here three parts of a flower. So, the first one is the petal. Uh, please read, Erica. Petals, modified leaves that surround the reproductive organ or plant. Okay, so thank you, Erica. So petals are modified leaves that surround the reproductive organ of plants. Normally, petals have different color or these are colorful leaves and with odor. So it plays an important role to attract pollinators. So that is the use of a petal, attract pollinators. Nators. Next, we have here the receptacle. So, receptacle, part of a plant which the flower is attached. So, this one is the receptacle. So, it holds the floral part of a flower. That is receptacle. Next part under sterile, we have here the sepals. So this one is the sepal. Sepals are modified leaves that protect a flower in bud and holds the petals when it blooms. So this one is the sepal, a leaf light that protects the flower. Under this sterile also, we have here other parts. So first one is the calyx. Collective term for sepal. So, if there is only one leaf that protects the flower, we call that one as sepal. But, pag collective term na siya, collection of sepals, we call that one as calyx. Next is the corolla. Collective term for petal. So, if there is only one petal, uh, yung ginagawa ninyo, he loves me, not he loves me. So, pag isa lang yung petal niya, you call that one as petal. But the collection of those petals in a certain flower, we call that one as corolla. Okay? So, take note of that one. Next is, we have also inflorescence. So, inflorescence is the cluster of flowers. 
So, example of a flower that exhibit inflorescence is this one. What is the name of this flower? Anyone, guys? What is the name of this flower? This flower is? Santan. Okay, very good. Santan. Uh, very good. This one is a santan. So, as you can see, there are many flowers in a, one rim of a santan. So, we call that one as cluster of flowers or inflorescence. So, that are the different parts of sterile. Okay? Next, we have here stamen. So, stamen is the male part of a flower. The first one is the filament. So, filament is stalks that support the anther. So, these are short, thin stalks. So, this one is the anther. In a certain flower, we have here several numbers of filaments. Next is we have here the anther. This one produces the pollen. So the anther is attached into the filament. Okay. So this anther produces the pollen. And take note that this pollen contains the sperm. These are tiny grains that contains, contains the sperm of a flower. So the pollen houses the sperm. So that is under the stamen. Next, we have here the female part of a flower, which is the carpel, and also named as the pistil. First part under carpel is the stigma. So this one is the stigma. So stigma it is the sticky part that catches the pollen grains from the stamen. So this one is the stigma. It catches the pollen grains. We also have here the style, the tube here, the long tube like that connects the stigma to the ovary. So again, this one is the stigma which is connected into the style and attach into the ovary. The last part of the carpel is the ovary. So, the ovary is the bulbous structure of the carpel which contains the ovule. So, inside the ovule, we have here the unfertilized egg cell. Okay? Uh, when it will be fertilized, it can develop into a root. So that is the ovary. It contains the ovule which contains the unfertilized egg cell and if the egg cell will fertilize it can develop into a fruit. So again, what are the different parts under carpel? What are the different parts under carpel? So let's have Erica. Okay, so let's see, Erica. So let's have say, Lara Isabel. Ah, nag-left siya. Okay, so let's have Kathleen. Mom, mom. Yes? Stigma is standing over, ma'am. Okay, so very good, Kathleen. We have stigma, style, and over. What about for the male part of... The flower. What are the parts under the stamen? So let's have Lara. Nandito na si Lara. Yes, Lara. Petal sepal kin. Yes, Lara, what is the male part of a flower? What are the parts under stamen? Lara? 
We have two. Ma'am. 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 Lara, natin na si Lara. Okay, so, nakapsat net ni Lara. Okay, so let's have... Ma'am. Ma'am. Angelica. Ma okay, Mariah Angelica. Sila mention under ma'am. Okay, very good. So we have filament and under. So those are the different parts of a flower. So I think you know already what are the different parts of a flower. So let's have here a simple activity. Label the different parts of a flower. Everybody label the different parts of a flower. Ma'am Nariga, umakas mo na. Ay na, uh, pwede nyo siyang i-horizontal, slide view. Okay, so Jairo already submitted and Erika. Napisit ko, ma'am. Ah, okay, so you can just write your answer na lang, Erika, sa messenger. Mom Aglalag City. Okay lang, Diana, you can send it through my messenger.
Okay, so Erica sent me her answers already in Messenger. Okay, so let's check if your answer is correct. So let's have this one. Okay, so tingnan natin kung correct yung sagot. So we have here filament. This one is filament, correct? So next we have here anchor. This one is the stigma. This one is the style, ovary, sepal, and petal. So very good. So I will check others later on. So did you get the correct answer? Grade 11. Correct ba yung mga sagot ninyo? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Yes, mom. Okay. So, yes, thou. Okay, very good. If yes. So, next. Why are flowers important? Why do you think flowers important? Anyone? Bakit importante ang bulaklak? No, I want flower. I want tibu. Yes, la. Okay, so very good, Lara. Pag sabi ni Lara, no, awanti flower, awanti bunga. Definitely. Because if the egg in that flower fertilize, it will develop into a fruit. Sabi natin kanina. Very good, Lara. What else? In your own point of view, why are flowers important? Flowers serve as the reproductive organ of plants, ma'am. Okay, so very good. Angel, also, sabi ni Angel, flower is the reproductive organ of plant. Yes, definitely, that is a fact. Very good. What else, in your own point of view, why are flowers important? Aside from being a reproductive organ of a, of a plant, in your own opinion, is flower important? Why is flower important? Isuti ang mostly nga animals, ma'am, kung isuti kan kanin da, ma'am. Okay, so sabi ni Saraya, thank you, Saraya, very good. So sabi ni Saraya, most of the animals eat flowers or plants. Okay, nice, Saraya. Ano pa? Imagine that a surrounding has no flower. Or imagine a surrounding has a full of flowers. What will you feel? It gives beauty to our surroundings, ma'am. Okay, so very good, Franked. So sabi ni Franked, it gives beauty to the environment. It makes the environment beautiful. And if the environment is beautiful, it will help us ease our mind and soul. For us, it will help us to remove stress in our daily life. So that's why flowers are important. Being the reproductive part of a plant, or in easing or making our mind and soul at ease. So it provides natural medicine for humans and some animals. So very good, Raven. So it can also help us 
Remove. Okay, remove aches in our body. So that is flower importance. So we also have here complete versus incomplete flower. Take note that a complete flower has all the parts being described. So it must have a stamen, steril, and carpel. But if an incomplete flower is missing one or more parts, it is considered as an incomplete flower. So, ayan siya. Next is we have here sexual reproduction in plants. So, mainly, the sexual reproduction in plants mainly involves pollination. So, pollination is the process of transferring pollen from the anther to a stigma of a flower. You transfer a pollen from the stigma of a flower. Uh, there are various ways in which pollination occurs. We have here self-pollination and cross-pollination. I have here an illustration of the two types of pollination. We have here the self-pollination and cross Pollination. Any volunteer who would like to explain the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination in that illustration? Anyone who would like to volunteer, please write, raise your hand. Differentiate the two types of pollination based from that illustration. This one is the self-pollination. This one is the cross-pollination. Any volunteer, grade 11? Okay, so Lara Vasquez raised a hand. So, Lara... Self-pollination, ma'am, gatan na kailangan ti other nga species para mag-pollinate. Tapos sa cross-pollination, kailangan na ti help ti other species like bees, ma'am. Okay, very good, uh, Lara. So, based from the observation of Lara, in this illustration, it doesn't need any species in order to undergo pollination. But in this part, it needs a pollinator or organism in order to Pollinate. Very good, Lara. So, what else? Aside from the explanation of Lara, ano pa yung napapansin dyan sa illustration? Aside from the pollinators. Yung self-pollination, wala siyang organism to pollinate. Yung isa, cross-pollination, it needs an organism to pollinate. What else can you add from that explanation? Anyone? Grade 11? Okay, so I will give you a clue. How many flowers are there in self-pollination and cross-pollination? Hello. Hello, grade 11. Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay, Reka. Aside from the organisms present na sinabi ni Lara, what other differentiation can you give from this illustration? Deta self-pollination, ma'am, kat kaya nagpaduuri awang kadwa na, ma'am. Deta mag-cross-pollination, kat kasapulan at kadwa na makapadu, ma'am. Okay, so very good, Reka. So, 
Uh, thank you. So, sabi ni Reka, in self-pollination, there is only one plant. Dito sa cross-pollination, it needs uh, another plant in order to pollinate. Okay. The Both of the answers of Lara and Renz are correct. So, in self-pollination, the pollen is transferred to the stigma of plants own flower. So, if, there is, if this one is on plant, the pollen is transferred from its own flower. Isa lang yung plant na uh, involved dito sa self-pollination. And, and it doesn't mean that uh, kailangan niya ng pollinator or ng organism to pollinate it. So, self-pollination. Next is dito sa cross-pollination, the pollen from the different plant or from this flower plant is being delivered to the stigma of another plant. And it involves pollinators in order to cross-pollinate. So that is the difference between self-pollination and cross-pollination. Aside from that, there are different methods on how pollen is transferred from one anther to one stigma. So we have here biotic pollination and abiotic pollination. So under biotic pollination, the pollination occurs 80%. Dito naman sa abiotic pollination, this is only 20%. So I have here different pollinators. Kindly name biotic pollinators that you can see in the illustration. What are the biotic pollinators that you can see in the illustration? Okay, so from Ken, oh, there is a B. What else? You can type your answer in the comment box. The butterfly. Butter what else? Very good, Katni. Alright. Butterfly. Okay, meron siyang flies. A butterfly. What else? Bird. Okay, bird. so there is a bird. Okay, meron ding bats. Okay, so very good. So you you already know what is abiotic from the word bio, which means living organism. Uh, very good, everyone. What about the abiotic factor or pollinator in this illustration? Leaves. Water. Okay, very good, Saraya. We have water. Leaves. Okay, so we have water. Wind. Okay, very good. So, first is the biotic pollination. This is a pollination by a pollinator. So, examples of pollinators are this one. Okay? So, pollination by a pollinator. So, pollination through biotic means, kaya nang sabi ko kanina, is 80%. And, insects are the most important pollinating animals. Some other living organisms are some pollinators of other plants. But mainly, dito sa biotic pollination natin, Insects are the most important pollinator. Take note of that one. Next is we have here abiotic pollination. Abiotic pollination, pollination without the involvement of other living organisms. So there is no involvement of living organisms. And in abiotic, 20% is for abiotic pollination. But out of that 20%, only only 10% of plants are being pollinated. That is because 98% is from the wind and the 2% is from the water. 
Bakit kaya 10% lang yung napopollinate? Out of that 20%, only 10% of plants are being pollinated. And knowing that we have here 98% for the wind, 2% for the water. What do you think happened to the pollen in that pollination? Ano kayang nangyayari sa pollen? Bakit 10% lang yung napopollinate? Kasi, why? Bakit kaya 10% lang yung napopollinate dito? Anong nangyayari pag may hangin, pag may water? Maragrag, ma'am. Okay, very good, Renz. The pollen at maragrag. Haan nga diretso nga mapan dyan ta? Stigma iti flower. That's why there is a small percentage of pollination in a biotic pollination. So, very good, Renz. Next. After the process of pollination, the process of fertilization might occur, which can result in the development of a seed which houses the embryo of a future plant. So I have here a cycle on how plant is being formed through different processes. So the first process is this one, antesis. Ano ba yung antesis? So when we say antesis, this is the period with at least one flower in a plant is fully open and functional. So pag sinabi natin fully, fully open and functional, this is the first opening of a flower during the process of flowering. If we relate this antesis into individuals or into humans, this is the first menstruation of an individual. So, merong ganito dito sa plants. Antesis is the first opening of a flower during the process of flowering. So, it, it will be able now to undergo fertilization, penetration. So, that one is antesis. After antesis, or after the flower is open, Bees and other insects will be attracted. So they will pollinate the flower, which led to flower pollination. So this bees, uh, this bees will move the pollen from one flower or from one anther to the stigma of a flower or of another flower. And... This pollen will enter the pollen tube. So this one is the pollen. It will enter the pollen tubes that would penetrate to the embryo sac. So this one is the embryo sac. So under the embryo sac, each, each part contains a egg, egg cell of a flower. So, if there is a penetration or if there is a successful penetration of the pollen into the embryo sac, fertilization will occur. So, the egg will be fertilized, which will then form into a zygote. Then, the zygote will form into an embryo. Then, seed then if the seed germinates as time pass by, it will turn again into a mature plant. So that is the cycle of a plant. Okay, so again, antesis, the bees will be attracted, it will undergo pollination, the pollen will penetrate the embryo sac, then the egg will fertilize, will turn into a zygote, then into an embryo, then turn into a seed, and if the seed germinates, it will turn into a mature 
plant. So that is the cycle of a plant in sexual reproduction. Okay? So is it clear grade 11? Clear ba? Grade 11? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, next, after sexual reproduction, we also have here asexual reproduction. So, dito sa asexual reproduction, uh, please read. Let's have near use, Edoya. Part of a parent plant is used to generate a new plant. Okay, thank you, near use. So, generating a new plant from a part of a parent plant. So, in a sexual reproduction, organs can separate from the parent plant with the ability to grow and develop. Take note, in a sexual reproduction, there is no gametes involved. Pag sinabing no gametes involved, there is no sex cell involved in this asexual reproduction. Just a part of a parent plant. Okay? Under a sexual reproduction, we have here two, the apomixis and the vegetative propagation. But the most common type of a sexual reproduction is the vegetative propagation. So let us start first with the apomixis. Apomixis, of course, when diploid cells in the ovule creates an embryo. This can later result in the formation of a seed. So, in apomixis, an egg can develop directly into the embryo without prior fertilization. So, if this one is the embryo which contains the unfertilized egg, it can develop or it can develop into a I got even though there is no fertilization. So that is meant by apomixis. I have here examples of image under apomixis. So do you know the names of these plants? These plants undergo apomixis. What plants are these? So this one is the dandelions or dandelions. We have here hawkweeds and this one is the meadow grasses or in Ilocano, purukut. Okay, purukut in Ilocano. Have you seen purukut already? Nakakita kayo purukutan. Kay dumok dekat jayanta sa pins uh, pantalon paldayo. Ada kay jayanta grasses. So those are purukut or meadow grasses which exhibit apomixis. Next is the vegetative propagation. I will wait. Nagawan type. Wait. Nag close wait lang.
Okay, so sorry for that. So we have here vegetative propagation. So vegetative propagation, a process in which plants reproduce from stems, roots, and leaves. So plant will reproduce from stem, roots, and leaves. So a new plant can grow from a part being taken away or taken from the parent plant, be it stem, root, or a uh, leaf. So that one is vegetative propagation. This vegetative propagation can be natural or artificial. First is the natural. So in here, we must give an example of natural propagation in stem, roots, leaf, and in a bud. So let us start, for example, with the stem. So in stem, we have here a strawberry plant. Strawberry plant is going to be our first example in stem. So the strawberry plant can develop runner shoot. That branch from the parent stem. So, pag bumaba yung stem niya, agramut isuna. And we call that one as runner shoot. So, this runner shoot will grow along the ground and will eventually can give rise to the daughter plants of the strawberry plant. So, this one is the parent plant and this one is the daughter plant. As the daughter plant was produced as a result of mitosis, it is genetically identical to the parent plant. So, parent plant and daughter plant is genetically identical because the daughter plant came from the stem of a parent plant. So, that is what meant by Natural vegetative propagation through stem. Okay, next we have here stem to birds. The potato plant produces stem to birds. So these are underground stems. So we have this one. This one are stem to birds. Okay, these are stem tubers. Basically, stem tubers are swollen underground stem. The swollen food reserves at the end of these stems are potatoes. So, these are the potatoes. So, for example, we have here a potato. So, if you look at a potato, you can see their eyes. So, these are the eyes of a potato. But eyes is not the name of that one. Uh, we just call that one little eyes in the potato, but the name of this one is the lateral buds. Okay? Lateral buds give rise to new shoots or stems, which will eventually give rise to a new potato. So, as you can see in this illustration, yung nandito kanina, these are the eyes or the lateral buds. It will grow into shoots or stems. Then at the end of the stem, it will produce a potato. Okay? So that one is a stem vegetative propagation through stem tubers. Next, natural vegetative propagation is through the leaf. Have you seen this kind of leaf? Or of this plant. Have you seen this kind of plant already? Nakakita kayo tika singamulan? Un ma'am. Un ma'am. Okay. So, what will happen if at the marugrug ijena? Sige, ito yung marugrug. What will happen? Sabi niyo nakakita kay Timulo ng Akastoyan. Ano nga tat mangyari no marugrug de gitu idtina? Uma do no ko magtubo manen. Okay, very good Renz. So, uma do no pan, it will propagate. The plant will 
propagate. So this example is a natural vegetative propagation through the leaf. So through the leaf, it can sprout into new plants. So these are leaflet or little leaves. When it drops off, it can burn, sprout into a new plant. But I have, I have here a question. What is the name of this plant? Katakataka, ma'am. Right. Katakataka. Okay, so katakataka. Anapay. Katakataka at Ilocano na ba detoy? Okay, so katakataka, but in English, this one is kalanku. Okay, kalanku is the name of this one or kaliku. Kaliku. And it was named as the mother of thousands. Tinawag siyang mother of thousands because at the edge of each leaf, it contains different leaflets that can sprout into new kalanko. Kaya tinawag siyang the mother of thousands. Okay? So another example is this one. So we have here different kalanko again. So at the edge of the leaf, there are leaflets. So these leaflets, if these leaflets will fall down, it will then sprout into another plant which is genetically the same as the parent plant so that one is natural vegetative propagation through the leaf next is through the roots so the development of this structure is known as root tubers Root tubers are roots that have become swollen. Our swollen roots are lateral buds found at the base of the stem. So this one are the lateral buds. So if you can see this, that, that not toy. This is not that. Ati kut swollen. Pag sinabi mong swollen kut ay bumso nga nagtutukol. So we call that one as lateral buds. So these swollen roots has the potential to become a new plant with shoots formed by those lateral buds. So example of these root tubers are this one. We call this one as dahlia. Jairamut na aduti, different na magas na. We call this one as dahlia. Another example is this one. What are these? Root tubers. Anong mga to? These are all. So, as you can see, we have here carrots, kamote. What are these? These are all kinds of what? RC. Okay, so these are all kind of root crops. Okay, so most root crops undergo natural vegetative propagation through the roots. Next is through the buds. So, onion bulb is an example of vegetative propagation by bulb, by bud. So, this is an example of a bulb which have very short roots and stems with leaves they have a round shape and grow under the ground so in this portion we have here apical bud as the center but the responsible part of the bulb for the growth of another bud or another bulb is the lateral bud so the lateral bud will form a new plant so, nulukatang jay sibuyas. Akin tinga na, we call that one as apical bud. Jay nang palawlaw kanya na, we call that one as lateral bud. So, that lateral bud is responsible in the production of a new 
plant. So this one are all bulbs. So that is under natural vegetative propagation. What are the parts involved in natural vegetative propagation? Again, what are the parts involved? We have four. Stem, root, stem, root, leaf, stem, root, leaf, body. Okay, very good. So we have stem, roots, leaf, and bud. So we are done with natural propagation. Next, let's have the artificial propagation. So under the artificial propagation, we have here cuttings, layering, and grafting. So first is cutting. Uh, please read Diana. Cuttings is done to propagate a plant by cutting the stem at an angle of a shoot with attached need. Okay, so thank you, Diana. So cutting, you're going to cut a stem in order to propagate another plant. Okay, so as we all do, cut then plant. Would you give me example of plants that can propagate through cuttings? Rose, ma'am. Okay, rose. Very good, Lara. What else? Rose, ano pa? Horseradish. Horseradish. Anapay. Through cuttings. Orchid, mom. Okay, so orchid. Pwede ba yung orchid? O pwede daw. Okay, so what else? Malungga. Carlatina, ma'am. Carlatina. Okay. Bougainvillea. What else? Yellow bell. Okay. Mayana. Okay, so there are many plants that can propagate by cutting the stem or by cutting. So that one is cutting. Okay, you cut the plant, then plant. Okay, so very good. Wait, 11. So next we have here layering. Ano naman kaya itong layering? In this layering, branch is bent and covered in soil with tip above the soil. New root system will form a new plant uncovered, tip the root stem. Or simply, this is just like the runner plant. We're in a shoot terrain. Plant is bent. Or that the stem na will be bent. Then, it will covered by soil. This will stimulate the growth of roots after which the plant can be separated. So, mabalin mo ito nga gabuto nun. Tapos, imula mo. So, we call that one as layering. So, what are plants? Example of plants that can propagate through layering. Adod to yung isko. Lagi dyan, agramot-ramot no mabababa. E, kolay violet. Kamutig. Okay. So, ka... Okay, so... Yun yung sabi ni Lara. Anapay. Okay, I will just... Uh, ask what is the name of those plants in our school so that I can... Give you another examples of this layering. Okay? So, marami dito sa school yung color violet. Dito sa mga different plant box. Okay? So, next is we have artificial vegetative propagation through grafting. So, through grafting, desirable features of different plants are fused together. So, this is usually done to hasten the reproductive ability of a plant. Or this will help us to grow a selected fruiting plant. But in grafting, we have here two parts. We have here the stock and the scion. So the stock is the 
one that is attached into the root. Okay, root system. Next is the scion, is the shoot system. This is the one that you're going to attach into a tree or into a plant. Okay, so through this grafting, you can create a tree of fruit. Just like, for example, this one. So in a one plant, it has different varieties of fruit. Also in this portion, also in this portion. So, sinawag nila itong grafting can use to create a fruit salad or fruit tree. Salad tree. Okay? Sinawag nila grafting can create a salad tree or tree of fruits. Different varieties of fruit. As long as your grafting is Perfect or okay. Okay, so can you give me example of trees in your place that undergo grafting which is successful already? What are the... Lemon tree. Oh, lemon can guava. Okay, so... Okay, Lara, ano pa? O DJ lang, lemon, lemon can guava tree. Ano pa? Okay, so DJ lang siguro at the tree yan tayo. Okay, so your assignment is to search to search different trees that undergo grafting which is successful in your own barangay. Okay, so that is addendum to your assignment. Okay, so next is this one. Or is there any question about the lesson? Is there any question about the lesson? Grade 11? None, ma'am. Oh, none. Okay, so are you ready now to enter to the competition mode of this lesson? discussion so hold your phone and be ready we have here one to ten questions and as usual uh dito we will have top three to receive a prize coming from me and you will receive that one this week okay so top three for the first top three to win this competition mode. Okay, so everybody ready your phone? So we have here 34 participants. So lahat kayo is 34 who attended this lesson. So let's have question one. Okay, so question number one. It is the process of transferring pollen from one anther to another or to a stigma of a flower. A. Pollination. C. Grafting. D. Reproduction. And there you see, you open your plus point, Anna, so that you can answer. Pag mahina yung net, you can just chat me. Okay, so 
55 seconds more. So, 20 over 34 pa lang yung sumagot, mga anak. The process of transferring pollen from the anther to a stigma of a flower. We call that one as what? Okay, so time's up. Okay, so the correct answer is definitely very good. You got it all. The correct answer is pollination. Okay, so next question. What part of a plant involves in this type of propagation? A roots, B stem, C leaf, D buds. What part of plant involves in this propagation? There is a runner shoot, then propagate into another plant. Twenty four seconds. Okay, so the correct answer is Okay, so the correct answer is letter B. Letter B is stem. So, yung mga sumagot nito, we have four. Rezebel, Eliza, Princess Agilus. The answer is letter B anak. Is stem okay? So stem in the sense that a day stem nag toy, nag lily, nag pababa, nag ramot, then turn again into another plant. Okay, so propagation is through stem. Next, let's have number three. Oh, please read the question number three, Justine. A period which at least one flower in a plant is fully open and functional. First opening of a flower during the process of flowering. Okay, thank you, Justin. So A, fertilization, B, apomixis, C, pollination, D, antesis. The first opening of a flower during the process of flowering. What do you call that one? Okay, so 30 seconds more. Okay, so the correct answer is 
antesis. This is the first opening of a flower. Okay, so 15 got the correct answer. Next, number four. How many percent is pollination through biotic means? A, 80%. B, 20 C, 98%. D, 2%. How many percent is pollination through biotic means? Okay, so the correct answer is, very good, grade 11, you got it all. The correct answer is letter A. Very good. So 80% is through biotic means, 20% is for abiotic, 98% is for the wind in abiotic, and 2% is for the water in abiotic. Very good. Next, question number five. It is the process by which an organism produces its own kind to ensure that its species lives on. A. Pollination. B. Vegetation. C. Reproduction. Answer. Okay, so time's up. The correct answer is letter. Okay, so the correct answer is letter C. That one is reproduction. Okay, so we have here 19 who got the correct answer. So pollination is the transfer of pollen from one under to the stigma. Vegetation is a propagation of plants through asexual reproduction. And letter C is the process of organism to produce its own kind to ensure that species will live on. Next, which of the following do not belong to the group? A. Stem, B. Root, C. Grafting, D. Leaves. A stem, B roots, C grafting, D leaves. Which of the following do not belong to the group?
Okay. So the correct answer is letter C. So we have here grafting. Grafting do not belong to the group. All of this one is stem, root, and leaves undergo to natural vegetative propagation. Next, question number seven. A part of flower that do not directly take part in the reproduction but greatly aid the reproduction process. A, carpel, B, sterile, C, stamen, D, ovary. Okay, so answer is letter B. That one is the sterile. Okay, so next question. We have, it is the female part of a flower. Carpel, sterile, stamen, or sepal. Female part of a flower. What is the female part of a flower? Okay, so answer is letter A. Female part of a flower is the carpel. Stamen is the male part of a flower. B is the sterile aid the reproduction process. Next, question number A. An artificial vegetative propagation where in a branch is bent and covered with soil which then stimulates root growth, after which plants can be separated. A. Layering, B. Budding, C. Cutting, D. Grafting. The branch is bent and covered with soil.
Okay, so the correct answer is letter A. Layering. Okay, kasi layering stimulates root growth. Cutting, you cut the plant, then plant A. Grafting, combination of two or more plants. Next, question number 10, the last one. By using this vegetative propagation, you can grow a tree with different varieties of fruits and flowers. A, layering. B, budding. C, cutting. D, grafting. Okay, so the correct answer of this one is letter. Okay, so the correct answer is letter D. Okay. So, let us look. Kung sino yung number one. Letter board. So, top three will receive a prize. So, we have... Again, again and again. So we have Kathleen again. So Kathleen from ABM. So we have here Raven Claire from Humes. Then Abigail from Humes A. So take note of that. You will receive a simple price coming from me this coming week. So uh, that's it. Did you learn something from this discussion? Did you learn something from this discussion? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. yes. Uh, right. Using your phone, type your favorite part of the lesson. And I will read those. Uh, Words that you're going to type later on after the session. What is the favorite? What is your favorite part of the lesson?
Okay, one minute to put your answers. Okay, so I will read all your sentences later on. Next, last part of the lesson. Since our lesson or our uh, discussion is all about plants and flowers, get your phone again and have a selfie with your favorite plant or with a, a flower and a plant present at home or in your houses. Then upload it here on the spot. Everybody, take a selfie with your favorite plant or any plant that is present in your house. Okay, so we have here Raymark. Oh, meron na siyang picture with plant dito. So, nice plant, Raymark. We also have Angelica. Okay, so nice picture. What about the others? Oh, we have Sandy, Saraya, Angelica. You look good having those kinds of flowers. It seems that the students of Santa Rosa National High Schools are plantitas and plantitos. You have very good flowers out there. Okay, so just upload your photos. Then for uh, the last part of our discussion, 
open all your cameras and let ha let us all have the groupie. So, for those who do not yet upload their photos with flowers, just upload it using the class code. I will check it later on. So, everybody, open your cameras. Then let's do the groupie picture. Okay, so everybody open your cameras. One, two, three. Princess, can I join? May I, can I, I open my I, cam? I, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, you can open it. I'm going to picture the arrow. Okay, so, one, two, three. I'm going to join up with Pam. Okay. Okay, so, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, so, thank you, grade 11. See you again next meeting, next week. So, goodbye, grade 11. Thank you, ma'am, Laureline, ma'am, Laida. Hi, princess. Welcome, ma'am. Princess, how are you at the school? At the mom. At the school? Yes, ma'am. I'm at the office and the post conference. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, 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 ma'am.